Today, we're talking about the most important thing in parenting. What could it be? Stay tuned and find out on today's episode of Wake Up With Hope. Welcome to Wake Up With Hope. Thank you for waking up with us today. Good night, friends. Goodbye, and we'll see you tomorrow. Wait, what are you, what are you doing? Um, I think you're a little confused. It's morning, and we're just getting started. We're not going to bed. I'm just playing along, honey. Did you know that today is National Opposite Day? Oh, okay. So, all right. All right. We can roll with it. That sounds like a pretty fun way to break out of the winter blues. <laughs> Maybe we should have dinner for breakfast and breakfast for dinner. You know, actually, that sounds fun. <laughs> that sounds fun. You know, friends, why don't you tag your loved ones today and join us in a little opposite day fun? <laughs> yep. Your kids are sure oh. to love this one. Send us a message on our Facebook page and let us know just how much confusion and fun you had. <laughs> you know, talking about fun, let's get started with our program today by taking a, a long look into the future. No, no, no. We're gonna take a look <laughs> back, right? It's, yeah. At what happened on this day in history. That's right. At the Premier Mine in Pretoria, South Africa, on January 25, 1905, the mine superintendent discovered a colossal 3,106 carat diamond during a routine inspection. Dubbed the Cullinan, this remarkable find, weighing 1.33 pounds, stood as the largest diamond ever unearthed. Hmm. You know, friend, have you ever wondered how much you are worth? Certainly more than even this diamond. Just as the Cullinan diamond stood out for its size and rarity, in the eyes of God, each one of us is unique and precious. Irrespective of our external appearance or circumstances, each one of us is a masterpiece, uniquely created by God, reflecting His divine craftsmanship. And as we go through trials and difficult circumstances, it is those very things that help us reveal, uncover, and develop a refined character within us. Just like the diamond requires cutting and polishing to reveal its true brilliance and beauty. It is through this transformative power of God's grace that life's rough edges can turn into something beautiful and purposeful. So cling to Him today as you embrace trials, trusting Him to work out something beautiful because God's grace is always sufficient. Amen. Well, this morning, Ready, Set, Cook brings us another recipe from their set. Today, it's for green curry.
Let's talk about the most important thing as our friends from The Parenting Place join us this morning. What's the most important thing in your child's world? Well, obviously it's, yeah, it's their social media account. Actually, no, it's you, of course. You're the most important thing, even if some of the time it doesn't feel like it. Absolutely never underestimate how important you are. And because of that, you need to look after yourself. You know, parenting is not a sprint. You're not running a 100 meter race. You're actually running a really long marathon. Some might say an ultra marathon. So it's important to gather the support and the tools you need to last the distance, to stay fresh, to stay healthy, if possible, to even stay enthusiastic so you don't run out of steam. So there's lots of different things you could do to make sure you look after yourself. For me personally, I try and find some time, it's quite hard, but some time for me to go for a run, or even better, spending time with friends is really good for me, and I can bring that energy back to my family to be the husband or to be the father that they deserve. If you're enjoying today's show, share it with a friend or visit our website at hopetv.org slash wake up to see more and search for us on YouTube to check out our YouTube channel and keep up with us there. Friends, we are delighted to spend this time with you this morning. Coming up next, we're going to be chasing waterfalls with Taj Pogleb and then we'll be right back after this break. Welcome back to Wake Up With Hope, where we are eager to share the hope and love Jesus gives. Have you ever stood in front of a waterfall mesmerized and captivated by its beauty and power? Pastor Taj Pakleb takes us on an adventure chasing waterfalls this morning as he explains why they deserve our attention. Have you ever had that experience, standing in front of a massive waterfall, mesmerized by its motion and captivated by its power, drawn in by its danger and bathed in its breathtaking beauty? There's something about waterfalls that arrests my attention every time. Each one is unique and deserves our attention and appreciation. It's like the waters urge forward over the edge of a cliff in eager desire to plunge into the depths of the unknown. Sometimes waterfalls are simply soft trickles over a small ledge, and other times they're like roaring explosions over cliffs. Nothing can hold them back. The water is soft, and yet because of its persistence, it has the power to carve canyons in the solid rock. I believe that God created waterfalls, not only to beautify this earth, but also to illustrate to the careful observer of the sweetness of spiritual surrender. You see, the water never stops to ask what's around the next corner. It never hesitates to take the plunge over the edge of a cliff. It never questions its direction. It simply goes wherever gravity takes it. It surrenders to the will and the ways of gravity. And in the same way, when we give our lives over to the Savior, just like the water is flowing forward in the river, we too can trust and move forward in the ways of the Lord. We can flow calmly along the path that He has chosen for us. And while we may not be able to see exactly what the future holds, we can trust whatever is beyond the next bend to the all-knowing, compassionate Creator. When cliffs of uncertainty loom ahead in our path, we can joyfully plunge over the edge, pouring out our souls in unrestrained surrender and devotion, knowing that God has prepared for us only joy and beauty in the unknown beyond. As the water surrenders to the gravity that pulls it, so too it is only by surrendering in complete trust to God that we will experience this holy joy and heavenly beauty. As the water spills over into new territory, it leaves revival, refreshment, and rejuvenation in its wake. And so too, God wants to use our experience of surrender and trust in Jesus as a testimony, reviving others who become weary and scorched by the way. Waterfalls can also reflect our personal experience of losing ground 
or having a fall in life. You see, it's inevitable living in this world of sin that at times we'll face the hardship of bankruptcy, sickness, divorce, disease, and even death. Many times we feel like these falls are the end of our lives. However, just as the waterfall is not the end of the stream, so too our losses are not the end of the journey. Rather, we must learn to see our losses as new beginnings, fresh ground where we can find new life, new territory for us to grow in the streams of righteousness in this dry and wicked world. But even in the waterfall, we can say like Paul did, I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but rubbish, that I may win Christ. So remember, the waterfall is not the end. It's a new beginning. It's simply the next phase in the stream of life. And as you keep moving forward in full surrender, you will find calmness and peace just around the bend. Ultimately, let us remember and never forget that Christ is the great waterfall of life. He came from heaven to earth to give us new life, a never failing stream of love that flowed from the throne of God into the hearts of men. His fall was our refreshment. His death was our life. And today He promises you, I will pour water upon him who is thirsty and floods upon the dry ground. I'll pour my spirit on your descendants and my blessing on your offspring. And you will spring up like the grass, like flowers by flowing streams. And so today, if you feel dry, dusty, dirty, or spiritually dead, come to the living water. Let it fall upon your life in showers of heavenly blessing to revive, refresh, and rejuvenate you as well as those around you as you continue to flow forward in the streams of spiritual life. Friends, don't go anywhere. When we return, Faith for Today brings us a powerful devotional thought. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Wake Up With Hope. Thank you for being here this morning. It's now time for our devotional thought. This morning, it will be brought to us by Faith for Today. S.I. McMillan, in his book, None of These Diseases, tells a story of a young woman who wanted to go to college, but her heart sank when she read the question on the application blank that asked, are you a leader? Being both honest and conscientious, she wrote, no, and returned the application expecting the worst. To her surprise, she received this reply from the college. Dear applicant, a study of the application forms reveals that this year our college will have 1,452 new leaders. We are accepting you because we feel it is imperative that they have at least one follower. As many of you know, one of the loneliest things you can ever do is lead. You'll never feel more alone than when you are leading. But I want to share some very assuring news with you today. In your life, you do not have to fight your battles alone. One of the places that we can find this in Scripture is Joshua chapter 5, which reads, Now when Joshua was near Jericho, he looked up and saw a man standing in front of him with a drawn sword in his hand. Joshua went up to him and asked, Are you for us or for our enemies? Neither, he replied, but as commander of the army of the Lord, I have now come. Then Joshua fell face down to the ground in reverence and asked him, What message does my Lord have for his servant? Now, there are times in life that are in such turmoil that we don't even recognize God when he's coming to our mess. Joshua has got the war thing down pat. 
Some of you are the same way. We don't have to motivate you to speak your mind. I don't need to tell you how to be aggressive. Some of you are ready to fight and then find out what you're fighting about. Joshua would go to war in a flash. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. God can use it. You don't need to squash it. You just need to control it. Joshua is getting ready to take on the battle of his life, and he is in the most tense moment before the ultimate battle in a series of battles. He is in the practice of battle. He has made a habit of being in battle, and he sees a man standing before him. So he runs up to him and says, are you for us or against us? Friend or foe, same team or spy? Joshua ran up to this man, but he actually wasn't a man at all. It was God. We get so caught up in all the constant battles in our lives that we don't always recognize God in the situation. God is with you in the midst of the wilderness. You are not on your own. You don't have to do all of your battles alone. If you'll just give him honor and glory in this place, he will fight your battles for you. Now, Joshua has just taken over leadership over the children of Israel. This is his first test. This is his first chance to prove that he's fit to be a leader. You are a leader. The challenge is that as you lead, you are constantly facing new things. If you're not a leader, then you are a repeater. The great challenge of being a leader is that every day, you cannot live as if you have everything down pat. Because every day, you're facing something new in an unknown area all the time. God is asking Joshua to do something new and uncharted. He wants the children of Israel to let God fight the battle against Jericho. Joshua is not a reserved, passive person who procrastinates. He's an aggressive warrior. He's a relentless, tenacious fighter. And interestingly, the thing that makes him a great leader is also the thing that almost kills him. It's common that your greatest strength can also become your greatest weakness if you find yourself in the wrong place. Joshua is strong and a fighter and headstrong. And perhaps the people are excited by the new leadership because Joshua was a decisive, straight-shooting guy. And Moses at times came across as the guy who had led them all in circles for a long time. Moses was a great leader, and God had hand-selected him. But Moses increasingly became more and more frustrated by his position until finally he found himself venting his frustration from the platform. You cannot lead if your fuel is frustration. It leads to simple, closed-minded leadership. You cannot lead a movement when your emotions are more transparent than your mission. Many times when God starts training you, he starts training you with turmoil. He allows some turmoil into your life so that you can learn from it, critique it, and prepare yourself for even greater turmoil to come. Joshua went up to him and he asked, are you for us or for our enemies? Neither, he replied, but as commander of the army of the Lord, I have now come. Joshua asked, are you for us or for our enemies? And this man, who is not really a man, replies, neither. God says, I don't take your side. I'm asking you to take my side. In the turmoil, we ask God if he's for us or against us, but God says, neither. I'm not your secret weapon, your ace card, your magic fairy dust. I have a plan that will work if you want to be part of that winning plan. It's your choice. But whether you get everything that you want out of this life or whether all of your problems and troubles are resolved before heaven is, in most cases, irrelevant. Some of the things in your life are merely the consequences of some of your choices. What did Joshua do when he realized that his place of crisis was also holy ground? He worshiped. When you make a church in the place of your crisis, you become a conqueror. What God instructed Joshua to do seemed ludicrous. He didn't instruct him to rally and to attack, to devise a a better strategy, to concoct a display of power that would show the world the true power of God. They didn't do any of that. And if they would have, they would have trampled on God's plan. God says, I have a better plan. It will not make sense. 
but I just need you to walk around the walls of Jericho for a week. It's my plan, and my plans only make sense after you see their fulfillment. A more modern illustration of this happened when John Patton was a missionary in the New Hebrides Islands. One night, hostile natives surrounded the mission station, intent on burning out the Pattons and killing them. Patton and his wife prayed during that terror-filled night that God would deliver them. When daylight came, they were amazed to see their attackers leave. A year later, the chief of the tribe was converted to Christ. Remembering what had happened, Patton asked the chief what had kept him from burning down the house and killing them. The chief replied in surprise, Well, who were all those men with you there? Patton knew no men were present, but the chief said he was afraid to attack because he had seen hundreds of big men in shining garments with drawn swords circling the mission station. Whatever battles you are facing right now, you do not have to fight them alone. You have a God with a bigger and better plan. Let us all take assurance in that truth today. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Roy, for sharing with us this morning. And friends, thank you for watching Wake Up With Hope. And if you would like to learn more about our program, please visit us at hopetv.org slash wake up. And don't forget to join us tomorrow. We will be talking about food that harms the brain, having a devotional thought by Pastor Mark Finley, and another hope-filled Reflections of Hope episode. Join us then. And if you enjoyed today's devotional thought and you would like to learn more, visit hope.study to receive your free Bible study guides. Again, that's hope. That study. We've sure enjoyed spending time with you, our friends, this morning. You know, and of course, we can't leave without our daily mm -hmm. Bible promise. And today's promise is found in James chapter 1, verse 5. It says, If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God, who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. Mm, it's a promise. God will give you wisdom to make good decisions and to have insight. You know, what a promise mm -hmm. that is. We all could use wisdom today. Let's Amen. pray. Father in heaven, thank you that as we begin this day, we have deadlines, we have a schedule, we have a, a, a job to get to, we have school, we have many things. And yes, Lord, we acknowledge that we need wisdom. And so Lord, we want to pause just now and ask for this wisdom that you promised. Thank you. And thank you that wisdom has come with hope and when hope is filled with wisdom, Lord, we can only expect blessings as you guide our steps. So thank you, Lord, for answering our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen.